Hey guys, Brian over here for another video and today I'm working with the 2021 Toyota RAV4 XLE. So here it is in the flesh and in this video we're going to do a button overview of all of the interior options on the car. Now just so you know the XLE also does have the option for a sunroof with a better audio system and cold weather package with heated seat steering wheel with rain sensing wipers. But this is one of the base ones. Let's check it out. All right, so here's what it looks like when you sit in the car and there's lots of buttons. If you saw my RAV4 LE video, you'll see that a lot of these buttons are very similar. A couple things are a little bit different, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over all the buttons from left to right, top to bottom. Here we go. All right, so starting on the door, I have my auto down, auto up windows all around. It's just a hard push or a hard pull. I have my window lock button over here, which will light up with a little green LED. Then I have the door lock and the unlock button. Notice that the door lock has a two little, two little knobbies. That's going to match the little nubbies here on the remote. They do that so you don't have to look down at it. You can just feel for it. Nice consistency there. You also have left mirror adjustment, right mirror adjustment, and center, so that if you touch this, it doesn't do anything. Speaking of the mirrors, you're getting blind spot monitor at the base level. You'll see that little uh, symbol right there in the corner. Down below, I have the seat adjustment for forward and back, up and down with a twist, and I have the recliner with lumbar support forward and back for the lower back. Of course, my floor mats lock into the floor. Underneath here, I have a lever which is closest to the outside of the body for gas and a lever for the hood. So just remember, closest to the outside is the gas because you're gonna be doing that most of the time. Up above that, I have a, a brightness level for my gauges. That's a little speedometer with a light bulb. So that changes the brightness to the speedometer and the interior lights. And then this is for your automatic high beams. In order to use the automatic high beams, I have to be in auto right here, and I push that forward, and then I get automatic high beams. On the vent, I can actually turn this all the way off or adjust the airflow, and that works for both vents on the sides. So not the center vents, you can just aim them away. And then moving on over to the stock, I have daytime runner lights off. This is auto, so the car will sense when you're driving during the day or night. You'll get daytime runner lights during the day and then full lighting at night. Parking lights and manual headlights for the old school. Here's the fog lights. I also have a one touch signal, so if I touch it and let go, it's gonna blink three times. So that's great for the highway when you're merging. On to the steering wheel. This section here is gonna control the MID, which is called your multi-information display. This side is gonna be cruise control. So let's start here. If I go from side to side, so I'm going left and right, you'll see there's little icons that light up on the screen. I'll make another video about what exactly is in the screen, but it's basically just a lot of different information. Of course, there's some settings you can change as well to your safety sense, but we'll just leave it on the little leaf screen because people like the digital speed. I can also select something and press back, which operate on that screen. Pick up and hang up phone calls is one button now as opposed to two like it used to be. Then I have the volume control here that counts for phone calls and music. The car has voice commands. Fun fact, you can actually train the car to learn your voice. And that's going to be done in your settings on there. Of course, you have your horn. Then for cruise control. So when I press this button, that's a little speedometer with a locking arrow. When I push that, I get a little symbol on the top here in green, but if I push and hold, the car goes away and you get the arrow on the other side. That's your regular cruise control if you don't like the radar cruise control. But say I go to regular, or sorry, to radar cruise control. When I set it, I can change the following distance with that button. There's gonna be three different following distances, close, medium, and far. Then of course I can cancel here or simply just push the brake and that'll cancel that. And then you can turn the radar back off. And this is how you increase and decrease your speed. You will get an actual digital number for your speed on the MID. I forgot one little thing. This little guy here, 
There's a little stalk on the left. That's gonna go through your trips. If you press and hold, it clears it. And back to odometer. Mode is gonna go through different audio modes. So AM, FM, Sirius, Bluetooth. If you press and hold, it'll actually pause and mute the music. And then this is how you go through your different tracks. Underneath the steering wheel, there's a lever. And if I pull this down, I can actually telescope and lower and raise the steering wheel. So once I pick that perfect spot, all I do is lock that back into place and I'm good to go. All right, let's work our way up. Up top, I have the light controls. So instead of pushing these, there's actually a separate button for it. And then if I push this, it's gonna light the front ones and the back ones. If I push this, there you go. That's gonna put the interior lights on with the door. And then there's my Toyota Safety Connect there. You have to download the app and get yourself registered. When you buy it from the dealership, make sure your salesperson does that with you, but it's free for the first year. And when you open that, you can push this once and somebody will speak to you. But if you push it twice, it's actually gonna send people to your location. If the airbags go off for any reason, they're also gonna send help to your location. And when I push this, I have a nice sunglass case with a soft backing so I don't scratch up my lenses. And then when these are down, I have additional plastic, you know, for when it's that weird spot when the sun is over there, you can pull the plastic out, protect your eyes. Down to the screen. There you go, just fixing the lighting. So you have your different buttons on the sides, but it's also a touch screen. So for instance, to get to music, I could push audio, but since it's on my home screen here, I know I'm in home screen because it says it here. I just push audio. Oh, one sec. Push the audio and it goes right to my audio source. I can pick between my different sources. If my phone is connected with Bluetooth, it'll show me right there. I can't turn any music on just because of copyright. When I go to menu, I know I'm in the menu because it says menu right over here. Sorry about my hand reflection. The sun is kind of hitting my hand. So let me hold it like this. In the menu, this is a great place for you to access your setup app. You can change some settings. You can change the color theme. This is where you do the voice recognition. You can even turn the beep off. Like I said, I'll go into what all, all this stuff is in a different video. Right now, I'm just telling you what these buttons do. Map for when you connect to Apple CarPlay or if you have an in-house navigation. Apps is gonna go through different apps. Phone is gonna connect you to your phone or if it's already connected, it's gonna show you your phone right on here. And then I can go through my different tracks, which is the same thing as this. This is gonna be your power on and off and volume. And this is gonna be your tune scroll for when you're tuning the different stations. Right below the radio, which is easy to find, is my hazards. Great way to communicate with people on the road. With the XLE, as opposed to the LE, you're getting your two zone climate control. Let me show you. So when I turn this up, I'm not synced. So I can actually make this side a little warmer. So everybody can be happy on both sides. When I press sync, I can use the driver side to control everything as a whole. So you don't have to do both to match it. You just hit the sync button. Notice how on the screen here, the buttons are right by their symbol. So I have the fan speed button here, up and down, which is right next to the symbol. Air direction is right here, which is right next to the symbol. AC and recirculate should pair with each other when you turn the temperature way down because in the hot weather, you wanna use these two together. I wouldn't advise using this when it's cold out and you're using the defroster. It might not even let you. I can turn the system off like this, and then I can just resume by turning the fan back up. If I hit auto, it's gonna be similar to the uh, climate in your house. So if you have like a central air, it's just gonna kinda of dictate what you tell it to do, and the fan speed will change intermittently based on what the system thinks you, what you need. Front and rear defrost are right next to each other, which makes sense. So you can just hit them together in the bad weather. If I hit eco heat and cool, the heat's gonna be less hot, the AC is gonna be less cold, but it could squeeze out a few more miles per gallon. When I hit the eco mode, which we'll get into, you're actually gonna go into eco heat and cool. I'm not a fan of eco heat and cool unless it's fall or spring, cause when it's really hot outside, and today it's about 92, I want the AC to be pretty cold, but to each their own. 
This is my track control, so that's gonna turn off the track. So pretty much the only, in my opinion, reason you'd ever wanna turn this off is if you parked and you got a lot of snow and you're just having a hard time getting out. Because what the system does is it'll, it'll cut power to the wheel to prevent slipping, but if you want full power, you wanna turn that off to get full power. Also, if you're on the trails and you wanna allow for some wheel slip, turn that off, and when you press it, it's gonna show you right on the MID. A lot of people like this button. So the cars are designed so that when you get to the red light and you come to a complete stop, the engine may turn off. If you don't like that feature, which I personally don't because I like my AC to stay nice and cold for me, you can press this and now the engine will not turn off at the red lights and you get this little symbol down here. You will have to press it every time. So when you turn the car off and turn it back on, you gotta push it again. So just make it a part of your pre-flight controls if that's something you want. Down below, I have my 12 volt plug on the left with a little dust cover. Sorry for the focus. And I have my USB plug on the right. That's gonna be the USB plug that you use for your Apple CarPlay, which if you, or Android Auto, which is when you plug the phone in, you'll get your navigation and your apps right on here. So we went over this stuff, the infotainment system, the climate control, next to the shifter area. All right, so fun fact, the shifter was actually not designed for you to shift like this. It was designed for you to have an overhand grip and use one or two fingers here to press the brake, pull it in, and shift. If you practice this, it makes it super easy. You have park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Once I go into drive, I can shift it over one and I can toggle forward or backward in the gears. Now, I'm gonna put it back in drive and you'll see on the bottom of the screen, it says D on the bottom left there. Here's R for reverse. But when I go down to D and shift it over, that's how I'm toggling through the gears. So I can toggle through all six gears and control the gear that I'm in all the way up to eight. And that's eight real gears, not a CVT, unless you have the hybrid. So that's gonna give me a very spirited drive, or here's a fun scenario. Say I'm driving through the snow, and I want full power to the wheels, I'd actually turn this off, I'd put it in second gear, and I'd go up a hill in the snow like it was nothing. I'd wanna keep those RPMs the same. That's just a little scenario. Chime in in the comments if you use this feature to control your gears besides just driving like a stick shift and tell us how it helped you out. Back to park, you'll see the parking brake connects all on its own. And then when I put it in drive, it releases all on its own. The hold button is great. Let me put my seatbelt on real quick because you have to be buckled up in order to use the brake hold feature. So when I push the brake hold button, I get a little green symbol there that says hold. Now let me put it in drive. Now I get the gold one. Once you see the gold, check me out, I'm in drive. Take my foot off the brake and it sits still. This is great for the city driving or the drive-through for when you're getting some food. So watch, I'm in drive right now, as you can see on the MID. Say I need to go forward a couple feet, I can give it a little bit of gas. And then when I come to a stop and it says hold, I take my foot off the brake and I'm just chilling. Don't forget though, to put it back in park when you're done. That's also a feature that when you turn the car off, it disengages and you gotta reapply it. So I'm just gonna turn it off now because I don't need it. All right, onto these buttons. I do get asked about these buttons a lot. These are gonna be the three, Eco, Normal, and Sport that you use the most. Like I mentioned before, Eco is gonna put you into Eco, Heat, and Cool, which it just did right now, see? right there. Also on the MID, things are gonna light up like a green over here and up top. So let me go back to normal mode. See how things get kind of green? That's gonna depower me a little bit. Yes, I can press this while I'm driving. It'll depower me a little bit and boost my gas economy. When I hit normal, it's gonna take me out of eco mode and that's just gonna be like regular driving. Just what this sticker says for gas mileage. But when I go to sport, it's gonna light up red. And that's my favorite mode. In sport mode, it's gonna make it a little bit more powerful. You're gonna have more pep to your step. The transmission's gonna rev out a little bit more. 
it's going to really show you how this thing can drive. It'll cost you a couple miles per gallon, but it's really fun. Especially since the new generation of RAV4 is very grounded. It has a lower center of gravity and much better suspension. But let me put it back in normal mode. If I'm going in the snow, I can turn snow mode on. And I'll actually get little snowflakes up top. See them? Now what's really cool is I can combine snow mode and eco mode or snow mode and sport mode. We're back to normal. The snow mode is going to take off in second gear to reduce your wheel slip. Let me turn off snow mode. Mud and sand is just for if I'm driving through mud and sand. It's just going to change how the all-wheel drive system works a little bit. And notice, let me do it again. When I press mud and sand, a couple things happen. I get the sand design here. That's all gold. But my pre-collision system turns off and my track control. And that makes sense because if I'm driving through mud and sand, I want full power to the wheels and I don't want that track control reducing power to the wheels, which will help me in normal driving, but it's going to hurt me when I'm driving in mud and sand. Now for rock and dirt, those systems go back on and I get this cool rock design. And if I'm driving through gravel or like a really dirty trail, like a gravelly dirt trail, that's going to change how the all-wheel drive system works a little bit. I don't know exactly what it does. I'm not a technician, but I've used it before on a gravel trail, and it's awesome. It, it seems like it's more responsive, and it shows you the all-wheel drive control. So you'll be able to see on each of the four wheels how much power you're getting. Let me just demonstrate real quick. You'll see these little notches. See that? Check that out. So that'll show you. Now I'm going to put it in reverse. That's going to show you how much power each separate... Yes, I'm looking at the road. It's going to show you how much power each wheel is getting. So we put it back in park. And I hit normal mode to turn that all off. Alright, so we went over all the buttons here. Now we're working our way down to where the cup holders are. Nothing special, just two nice big cup holders. Here's my two key fobs because you get a push button start with the XLE, which you just press the brake and the push start to start it. But you can press the push start to shut it down without needing the brake. As long as you have the fob on you or in the car. And inside, I have two USBs with a nice storage area. No sliding shelf like in the Highlander, but I got a lot of space in here and a carpet too, which is nice. On to the right, you're getting a nice shelf here with a big lip so your things don't slide out and fall everywhere. Pretty big glove box with a bunch of books on how to use your car. Of course, I can help you with that as well. You have bottle holders in the doors. Let me just get out of the sunlight. And a little symbol here that tries to tell you, hey, don't put your drinks that are uncovered in there. Floor mat does not lock into the floor on the passenger side like it does in the trucks, but it stays, stays pretty much still where it is. I've been in these cars a lot. Let's check out the back. All right, once we get into the back here, I have my child lock here so I can turn that on and I can only get out from the outside. So if I pull on this handle, I can't get out. So you can play a prank on somebody. Don't kidnap people or you can keep your kids in there. Kind of like in the police cars. Well, pretty much exactly like it. In the back of the XLE, another thing that's different. I have a separate ventilation back here so I can control the airflow. So this is off and this is all the way on. I can't change a separate temperature like in the Highlander, but at least I can adjust the airflow, which is really nice. And I can even change the direction so that everybody's happy. Dog and cat owners, the dogs and cats love having their own air back here. Kids love it back here. It prevents you from getting stuffy. All my LE drivers, sorry, you're just gonna have to use your little jet stream in the front, but you're getting it with this car and you're getting two more USBs instead of a 12 volt plug-in, which you would have to run an inverter. You get the actual USBs with the XLE and a nice one piece floor mat. I'd say three quarters of the XLEs are coming with all weather mats lately, which I really love because people love their all weather mats in New York. If you're watching from the South, tell me, do you love all weather mats? They updated the way the seats fold down. So the last generation of RAV4, there was a round button that you had to push. In fact, the beginning of that generation, they put it in an awkward spot, but then they put it here and this would fold down. And then I had to pull a lever down here to make this. So my hands and arms were all over the place and it took multiple hands. Now it's different. I pull this, it goes right down. Easy. I do that on both sides. Once the seat is back up, it's in an upright position, but I can actually pull this up and 
there's the upright position. I can put it back a little bit more. It doesn't recline as much as the last generation, but I haven't had any complaints about it yet. Fun safety feature here. If it's not clicked in all the way, you get this little warning thing. So click it in. Look out for your back passengers and pay attention. They also made your anchor hooks here easier to get to, which my moms and dads love. The seat belts do not get lost. You can push on those as much as you want. So the whole idea was, they even made this a little thinner but stronger. The whole idea is now with one hand, you can literally go over the baby and click it in and this isn't getting lost. It's awesome. It's the little things that count. And you have your armrest that hovers instead of sits flat and at a weird angle. Now it hovers, so it's the perfect angle with two cup holders. Privacy glass is standard on these cars. If you get the RAV4 XLE with the sunroof, you'll also get an automatic hatchback, but this one has the manual. No muscles needed, it comes right up. And if you get the all-weather mats, chances are it's gonna come with this cargo protector. And you're also getting these four metal D-rings so you can ratchet stuff down. Tonneau cover I'm seeing pretty much on all of them that just clips right in here like this. What's cool is I can just grab one of these spring-loaded heads and that comes right out. Super easy. And when the seats fold down, I mean, let me show you real quick. Boom. Boom. Don't scratch up the interior. Now you got a little baby Tacoma with way better gas mileage. When you have a car that has the push button start and you have a key fob like this, as long as the key is on you and the car is off, I can simply lock just like that. And then to unlock it, I can pull the door right open. It's only gonna do the driver door. If you do it on the passenger side, it'll do the whole car. And then if I leave the car in there, or not the car, the keys, and I try to lock it, you hear that? The car is letting me know. And on the MID, you're not gonna be able to read it. It'll say on the MID in there, it'll say key is detected in the vehicle. And to start it, you just press the brake and the push start button. Good to go. So that's the 2021 Toyota RAV4 XLE, the base edition that does not have the cold weather package. I have a hybrid XLE that's going to be going to its new home on Saturday that I'll probably do a video on for you because these cars, they're unique. They're a little bit different. And it's interesting once you go from hybrid to gas model. This one's a gas model, by the way. There's little things that are different about them that people might not know. Let me know what you think about the design. There's some Lexus inspiration in the taillights there, which people really like. Do you like the new RAV4? It's been out for two years already. Do you have a RAV4? Have you been in one? Is there something they could do different? Is there something they did great? I love these LEDs. Helps you see the deer up in New York. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Thank you so much for all the support on my videos. I love helping people. And I'll see you in the next one.